Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. I've had this Electrovoice RE20 for a while, and it's passing signal fine like it always has. However, yeah, it's not supposed to do that. But maybe worse than that, Ugh, this nasty, powdery, yet sticky black stuff is the foam inside the mic that has completely deteriorated. So, time to do something about that. I know other people have made videos about this, but with finicky processes, I like to watch as many videos as I can to get a better sense of it, so hopefully you'll find this helpful when the time comes. I'm going to keep track of the major parts of the mic with a graphic to serve as a kind of frame of reference for reassembly. I've ordered the three foam pieces that need replacing from Bosch. Yes, the tool company who actually owns Electrovoice these days. There are part numbers for all three in the description. There are also a few tools needed for the job. A small flathead screwdriver. This one is part of a set from Harbor Freight and it sucks. Uh, I would steer clear of these plastic collet types, but you do need something small. A 964th hex key. I'm told that a T20 Torx bit is also a good fit here. A 0.035 inch hex key. I had to order this from McMaster Car because they are way smaller than most sets include. Some wire clippers. A soldering iron. Isopropyl alcohol for helping remove the foam. Plastic brushes. A Phillips head screwdriver. A solder sucker can be handy. And I also got this way overpriced assortment of foam-tipped swabs for getting into tight areas. I'm starting by removing the head basket, which is held in place with the tiny hex screw here. Just a few turns is enough, and then the head basket just unscrews with a little pressure. Absolutely disgusting. Next, I'll work on the rear side of the mic. There's a reverse threaded screw holding the XLR connector in, so turning it counterclockwise sinks the screw into the connector, allowing it to be pulled out. Just for reference, on mine, red is connected to pin two, green is pin three, and pin one has a jumper to ground. Down in the barrel of the mic is a 964 hex screw holding the bottom part of the mic on. Electrovoice used something like Loctite on their screws, so it can take a little pressure to get them out. That's why it's so important to have the right size tools to avoid stripping the screw heads. Underneath this piece is the plastic circuit assembly, held in place by this three-legged metal piece. Just three Phillips head screws to get this off. You can see one of the screws goes through this ground eyelet. On older models, there's a post sticking out that has the ground wire wrapped around it. With a little prying, I was able to get this plastic assembly out. I snipped the blue and black wires to disconnect the plastic assembly and free the motor capsule assembly to come out of the front side. We are in, and it looks rough. Uh, everything is just absolutely covered with disintegrated foam. Uh, it's hard to even vacuum up because it's so sticky. You can see when I brush it with a screwdriver, it just smears. I had this small bottle of 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol I had gotten for working on PCBs, so I'm gonna use that here. I tested the gray finish on the inside of the mic, and it doesn't look like the color is affected by the alcohol. So from here, I just went to town with the alcohol, a plastic brush, foam swabs, and lint-free cloth. I also used a little compressed air, but kept that away from the mic capsule. So here are the cleaned up parts of the mic body ready for new foam. I didn't try to get it spotless, just got rid of anything loose or that I could get to safely with the alcohol. Uh, it's certainly a huge improvement. Time for reassembly. This coarse piece goes in the head basket.
the motor assembly goes into the kind of sleeve piece with the blue, black, and ground wires feeding through the hole in the bottom. It's tricky to get all three threaded through, so I used a little tape to keep the ends together. Then the whole thing gets shoved into the body of the mic. Uh, it is a tight fit and takes some convincing, but I tried to keep from putting too much pressure near the mic capsule. Next was this little collar piece. Then those same three wires need to go back through the plastic circuit assembly. It's a crowded area, so I used a screwdriver to help guide them through. I was having trouble getting the plastic assembly to seat fully back in the mic, and realized that the motor should actually stick out a bit from the body of the mic, which gives room for it to seat. Uh, before putting that in place, I reconnected the blue and black wires to their respective solder terminals. Then I put that three-legged piece back in place, only to remember the one screw should go through that ground eyelet. The 964 hex screw holds the bottom of the mic on, and then the XLR goes back in place. Now let's give it a test. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Still passing signal fine, but just as importantly, no clunking motor or foam falling out. And that's all there is to it. It's a finicky job, but really not too bad, and the mic should be good to go for another decade or so before we're back in the same mess. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to see more, and I'll see you next time.